This is why the Boston Celtics can't be slept on. Beantown's won five of their last six games, fueled by the fourth best defense in the association, plus a duo of Tatum and Brown that's combined to average over 50 points. Josh Richardson's proved to be the perfect floor spacer, given he's taking around four triples per night and making the highest three-point percentage since his rookie year at an NBA 17th best 41.1%. The one-two punch of Tatum and Brown are not only elite scores, but they rank second and third respectively in defensive rating among small forwards. You're about to see a breakdown of all that and more, and make sure you stay tuned for the main reason why the Celtics can't be forgotten about in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. Right quick, only 12.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Links down below in the description for those two platforms. The Boston Celtics have turned a corner, having won 10 of their last 14 games. We'll get to the positives, like Jason Tatum rediscovering his shot, Marcus Smart's return, and the team looking to make some noise in the second leg of the season, but first, we have to break down a player who's likely in his last days with the Celtics in Dennis Schroeder. Since he turned down the max in LA to sign a $5.0 million mid-level exception in Boston, Schroeder's been the most polarizing player on the Celtics. With the deadline a week away, due to his status as a rental, Schroeder's become a well-known trade target across the association. At the start of the season, Dennis provided impact as the main spark plug off the pine, an integral piece to the second unit with the offense struggling, Schroeder's shot-creating ability pushed the conversation towards the veteran guard getting more minutes. Some of his scoring displays had won Boston games, like when he dropped 38 on the Milwaukee Bucks back in November. In that month, the German floor general averaged 18.3 points on 46% shooting. So what happened? Well, as the year progressed and Boston couldn't find consistency, it started to become clear that was because the playing styles of Schroeder and another key rotation backcourt piece in Marcus Smart were redundant. Given Marcus and Dennis are both primary ball handlers, this stagnated the C's flow. Unfortunately for Dennis, since becoming an evident liability in the system, his minutes have steadily declined from 33.2 per game in November to 30.2 in December to 26 in January and now just 17 in February. E May looking to other options and the team having success because of it has led to more whispers of Schroeder being on the block and now it seems like the veteran guard has all but checked out on the team in the last month. Because in this dominant 14 game stretch where Boston's playing some of their most complete basketball of the year, Dennis Schroeder ranks dead last on the team in defensive rating at 108.1, third worst in net rating. He's dead last in pace and the Celtics have been plus 10.6 when Schroeder is off the court. It's pretty wild how such a relied upon rotation player early in the year has drastically cooled off. Boston's starting to find its groove and unfortunately for Schroeder, it's coming at the expense of his playing time. Head coach Ime Udoka spoke on the team's recent W against the playoff bound Charlotte Hornets saying, quote, we've been in enough close games to where we've seen it go the other way. So we feel like we've hit a stretch where we get the shots we want, get the right looks, and then buckle down on defense and make the right plays. That's a sign of growth, end quote. Against the Hornets, the most noteworthy sign of growth can be attributed to Boston's role players, who provided stable contributions in support of Boston's typical offense manufacturers. Charlotte held Tatum to 19 points and Jalen Brown to 15, 20 points below their combined season average. There to save the day, Josh Richardson, Marcus Smart, and Grant Williams took advantage of their open looks, with the pressure beaming down on their duo. 2021 summer trade acquisition and Jay Rich led the way with 23 points, making six of his eight triples. Richardson has been a stellar pickup from day one. Marcus Smart added 22 of his own along with six dimes. Grant's 12 points on four of seven shooting was a welcome sight off the bench. Schroeder, the only other sub to see time, was ineffective, but thanks to his teammates' efforts, it barely mattered. Coach Udoka spoke on Tatum and Brown's low scoring outings, saying, that's what it's going to take some nights. It's not always going to be your night scoring when they're trying to stop you. But trust your teammates, make the right play, end quote. And that's exactly what the Jays did, combining for 15 assists. Jason led the way with a shocking nine dimes. The Celts as a whole assisted on 31 of their 42 field goals and made 51.2% of their attempts in the W. While they were somewhat unable to slow down Charlotte's top weapons from going off, as LaMelo Ball had 38 points, 
Terry Rozier had 23, PJ Washington had 16, and Kelly Oubre had 15. Boston's team effort being even more efficient than it's been as of late was damn impressive. First year coach Udoka continued post game saying, we tell them regardless of what your teammates do, make the right play and trust your guys. Tonight the shots fell, they stayed with it, but either way, if they do it or not, you can't force the action and force your way into turnovers and poor shots. We want to play the right way at all times, make or miss, and then rely on our defense, end quote. And when you're unable to completely rest your head on your defense, you get creative. Roles change, like Tatum morphing into a facilitator as opposed to a primary scorer, and Richardson taking on a role as a leading shot taker, stepping up with a massive offensive game. With this win, the first nine teams in the Eastern Conference are now separated by five and a half games. What an absolute logjam that is. As we looked at yesterday, my Raptors are in the eighth seed, but right now, Boston's locked up with them. Jay Rich had a great quote post-game saying, it feels nice seeing us be able to execute when things got tight. Just seeing us kind of turn that narrative around is good, so hopefully we can continue that. Like the team we broke down yesterday in the steaming Toronto Raptors, the Boston Celtics are shaping themselves into a formidable lower seed in the Eastern Conference. And now we're going to look at the main reason for why we can't sleep on them this year. A lot's happened since then, like four NBA seasons and a pandemic, so I wouldn't blame you if it slipped your mind. But the 2018 season for Boston may have some implications for the year we're currently witnessing. Because in that year, as Kyrie Irving was injured, with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, and Marcus Smart fueling Beantown's chances, the squad got one win, really one quarter a few minutes away, from beating the Cavaliers in the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals. Also, minus Horford two years later in the bubble, the exact same core again came up just short of reaching the Finals in 2020. In untimely fashion, Jalen Brown got hurt just before the 2021 playoffs, which led the undermanned seas to go down in five to the rarely intact Big Three of the Brooklyn Nets. At full strength, fans in Boston have had to deal with some bad luck and heartbreakers, but for the most part, they've witnessed their young squad have the adequate perimeter shot creation to have success in the postseason. In 2022, with Tatum turning 24 in March and with Brown at the age of 25, the one-two punch entering the prime of their careers makes Boston very tough to beat four times out of seven if they sneak into the playoffs. But will Boston continue to change the narrative? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says, Before you even said any suggestions of players the Raptors could trade for, Mo Bamba came to mind. I feel like snagging him at the trade deadline would really help Toronto with their interior defense and rebounding, while also providing them with an above-average shooter. Appreciate every take. I hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.